Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to thank God for this day, a blessed Ash Wednesday. Yesterday was a strong Tuesday, a day where people could feast as they prepare for the Lent. Also, there was a tradition that people wrote their sins and uh, made some penance and burned them in preparation for Ash Wednesday. Today is the official commencement of the 40 days of Lent. Of course, excluding the Sunday. There are 46 days, but all Sundays are excluded. Lent is a time where we remember the Christian, the three Christian disciplines. The discipline of prayer, fasting, and giving. What we intend to do during this time of Lent is self-discipline, service to humanity, and prayer to God. Today, during our Lent, our Ash Wednesday service, where ashes are embossed on, on the heads of the congregants, with the words, from the dust, remember, from the dust you came, and to the dust you will go. It reminds us of the futility and the finiteness of humanity. It reminds us that our devotion to God is very critical. Today, our reading is drawn from Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is an interesting psalm. It's a psalm of David. And David wrote after a circumstance where he had uh, committed adultery with Bathsheba. Then later, he managed to conspire to kill Uriah. So he committed um, uh, infidelity, adultery, and murder. And the man by the name of David was oblivious. Maybe his conscience was seared, and he did not see it as a big deal. Until after some time, some biblical scholars say, especially the writer says that after a year, Prophet Nathan confronts him with a story, a parable. Maybe he could not directly confront a king. He confronts him with a parable of one man with one sheep, which, the, which he feeds it, and uh, considered it as one of the daughters. Then a rich man with numerous sheep, but when the visitor came, he decides to go and slaughter the sheep of the poor man. David was enraged, and he saw injustice. Then Nathan pointed out that it is David who had committed the injustice by committing adultery and murder. David is petrified with contrition and is mortified by his sin. David decide to write this psalm of penitence. And I want to say Psalm 51 is known as a psalm of penitence. During this time of Lent that commences today is a time when we should be penitent of our sins. I want us to draw lessons from this psalm that will lead us in the prayer of penitence, especially during this particular season. And I want to talk about the true prayer of penitent. The true prayer of penitent has three characteristics. Number one, it makes a man turn away from sin. David turned away from sin. There are three Hebrew words that define sin. It is known as, number one, transgression, which is disobedience, sin which is a martyr, missing the mark, and also willful distortion of God's word. Before you turn away from sin, you must realize the severity of sin. Sin costs you more than you want to pay. Sin keeps you longer than you want to stay. Sin will take you further than you want to go. David realized the reality of sin. And when you, you must turn away from sin, you must know what sin is. It is transgression and rebellion 
against God, missing the mark and distorting God's plan. Number two, when you turn away from sin, you must realize that all sin are directed to God. When you sin, you are not sinning only against humanity, but ultimately you are sinning against God. Therefore, all true penitent prayers begin from turning away from sin. And I want to tell you, you turn away from sin by not sorrow. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. But godly sorrow alone and crying and uh, being hysterical is not repentance. Repentance is a change of mind, a change of attitude, and a change of action. Then when you turn away from sin, number two, you turn to God. How do you turn to God? You turn to God for his mercy. David knew that in sin, it is only God who was able to forgive and cleanse him. We depend on the mercies of God. As we repent, God is gracious and merciful and he is able to forgive and to cleanse us from all iniquity and righteousness and unrighteousness. He depended on the mercies of God. The mercies of the God and his faithfulness is new every morning. This Lent, may you not only turn away from sin, but turn to God, depending on his mercies, on his grace, on his goodness, on his love. And lastly, we turn to God's sanctification. David, in this prayer, knew that the, he desired to be cleansed. It is true that some people say that even in the Old Testament, people were saved by looking towards Christ by faith and his cross. Like David, he wished for the cleansing, and that cleansing was only possible through Christ. In theology, we call it initial sanctification. That is when a Christian is set apart and the work of God's grace commences in his life. Allow me to say that during this Lent, we turn to God. We turn to God to sanctify us and to cleanse us. It is a project of God's cleansing where we routinely die to sin and live unto righteousness. And I pray that even God uses the Christian discipline to sanctify us. The one of the Christian discipline that is critical during this time, number one, is the critical, the crit critical Christian discipline of prayer. When we pray in the book of Ma Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 18, when we pray, we don't pray for publicity. We don't seek publicity. Our prayers are directed to God. And it is to God alone that we is our object of our prayer. We pray to God. Number two, we do not only pray as a discipline. We pray as a discipline, we direct it to God. We need to pray to God about Kenya and the political situation and scenario. Number two, we don't only pray, we fast. Fasting is different from hunger strike. Hunger strike is abstaining from food for no purpose. But true fasting is a fasting that has a religious discipline. We fast so that we can pray. We fast so that we can dedicate our lives to God. And even we fast to be committed to God. And our fasting is not postponing eating. We don't postpone eating and use that money to eat another time. When we fast, we save what we could have eaten and give it during our Easter time, during our Easter envelopes, in our Easter envelopes and giving. That is one of the disciplines of fasting. We may fast from meat. We may fast from intimacy. We may fast from technology and even WhatsApp. And say, for these 40 days, I'll not go to YouTube or WhatsApp or, or whatever. Or I'll only go for religious purposes. Fasting from certain food. Sat fasting from a particular meal. And I pray that Kenya, which is an eating nation, there are people who eat six times a day, seven times. And uh, I can tell you, I know people who can eat even eight times. 
and uh, overindulgence le leads to lifestyle diseases and a lot of unhealthy life. Fasting is good for your health. Lastly, giving. Let's give to the people who cannot reciprocate. Let's remember the poor. Therefore, may the Lord richly bless you, brethren, especially today as we consider the commencement of this Lentil season. May the Lord richly bless you. May he be with you. Remember that true penitent prayer during Lent, number one, turns away, turns us away from sin, turns us to God, and it turns us to depend on God's salvation and sanctification. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.